the gut. Are you looking for better gut health? I've got you. I've got the top eight habits that have helped me dramatically, dramatically improve my gut health over the years. Tune in to learn more. Hey everybody, I'm Kelly Alexa, fitness fanatic, serial entrepreneur, confidence coach, and most recently, keto convert. Last year, at the urging of my functional medicine doctor, I went keto, and it was so reluctantly you have no idea. But I'm mentioning it here because that is going to be part of what I'll be talking about today when I talk about the eight habits that helped improve my gut health, because the keto approach to eating is actually something that will significantly improve gut health, and I'll talk about that and explain why. But today, we are gonna be talking about lots of great, easy to implement tips and specific products from the, let's just say, supplement category that have helped me dramatically improve my gut situation, which used to be horrible. So tune in to learn more. All right, guys, you know the drill. Make sure that you're subscribed and also make sure you hit that cute little bell button so that you're notified whenever we put up a new video here on this channel. Thanks so much, let's get started. All right, everybody, so we're talking about gut health today and why, but gut health is, I almost said butt health. <laughs> gut health is such a buzzword and you know, if you're if you if you hear it and it's kind of like I think about when I used to hear people talking about oh you've got to buy organic food back in the day and I used to be like what's the big deal maybe you're one of those people who's like what's the big deal about gut health and if you haven't done reading about gut health and, and you don't quite understand maybe you've heard phrases like it all begins in the gut it it all everything originates in the gut it really it really does. And, and I will summarize for you to say that if you have a healthy gut, ev so much of pretty much everything else is affected. So, I mean, to be overwhelmingly simple about it, our bodies, in, in our bodies, all of our bodily, sy sy I'm having difficulty speaking today, all of our bodily systems, if you will, are connected, right? But everything is connected to the gut. So if, you're, if your gut, let me put it to you in a way that's probably easiest for you to understand. Your gut is tied to processing food. These are Kelly Alexa's words, okay? This is the way I'm describing it. Your gut is, is, is where we process our food and you, you, when you take in food, you digest your food, you eliminate your food. I think we all have a basic understanding that elimination is a key component to a healthy life. If you are not eliminating food, and I know that this is a topic, like when I was younger, I did not want to talk about anything to do with going to the bathroom. I didn't want to hear the word urine. I didn't want to hear the word poop. I didn't want to hear the word anything, anything to do with going to the bathroom. <laughs> you ask anybody. I have learned now how important the process of elimination is, the process of digestion, the pro how important our healthy gut is. And, and when your gut is healthy, you will have a, a stronger elimination. When you are eliminating foods, that's what we're supposed to do. When you're not eliminating foods and foods stay in your system, they've got to go somewhere. And you know that if you eat a pizza, it's not just going to sit in your stomach as a pizza. If you put a pizza out on your back porch, it's gonna rot. Well, the same thing is gonna happen in your body. So if you're not, for lack of a better way of saying it, if you're not pooping stuff out, it's gonna, for lack of a better way of saying it, rot inside your body and infiltrate your bloodstream. Again, these are my words, this is my way of saying it. You don't want to keep things in your body that are meant to be released into the universe, okay? Healthy el elimination, is such an important part of health. It's also a hugely important part of weight loss. From strictly a, just let's be real, you know, letting that stuff go, if you've ever, do yourself a favor. Try weighing yourself in the morning before you've had a bowel movement and after you've had a bowel movement. It actually physically has weight. I'm sure you realize that. And if you're not letting that stuff out of your body, you're holding it in. So. All jokes aside, 
healthy elimination is key. Healthy elimination happens when you have a healthy gut. Healthy gut ensures healthy digestion. So all of these things are connected. This is why we wanna make sure we have a healthy gut. Furthermore, when you have a healthy gut, you're just going to feel better. When you don't have a healthy gut, you're gonna deal with all kinds of issues. And it's not just that your tummy is gonna feel bad, that is definitely gonna happen. When my gut was not, when I was not paying attention to my health or my fitness, when I was younger in my 20s, um, when my whole life revolved around drinking and partying and not being healthy and having no idea what I was doing, and I just spent all my life at Old, old Country Buffet down in Pensacola, Florida, and just being a complete alcoholic lush. Um, <laughs> I ate bad, I didn't work out, and I was drinking all the time. I mean, it was just the most unhealthy lifestyle you could possibly imagine. I'm surprised sometimes that I'm alive. But uh, when I was younger, I was constantly dealing with the most painful, bloated stomach all the time. All the time. And I mean overwhelmingly painful bloating. Like the kind that I would, I distinctly remember I would be sometimes in a grocery store and I'd be so bloated and, and sometimes I would get a cramp that I, I would like not be able to move. I would have to just stand still. In the, I still remember this one time and I was in Myers, and I just was like, oh my God, I'm just literally dying. I don't know if, if I'm gonna end up like going to the bathroom in my pants or something. Like that's what I thought. I was just always having a stomach ache. Um, I inherit, I think I inherit part of this from my dad. And the difference between me and my dad is that I actually, you know, when I see that I have something wrong, I choose to find out what's wrong and then make changes. Whereas my dad, he doesn't change what he eats at all. And then he just complains about having a stomach ache and stomach problems all the time, all the time. It is the bane of our family's existence going, oh, dad has a stomach ache again. He can't go to this. He can't go to that you know, blah, blah, blah. It's just ridiculous. So you're, you're back to what I was saying a second ago. When you have an unhealthy gut, you're not just going to have symptoms in your tummy. You're healthy. You're an, uh, an unhealthy gut can actually lead to something called leaky gut. Leaky gut can actually end up with all kinds of inflammation and other can cause all kinds of other symptoms all over your body. I mean, and that's another topic. Um, I certainly would not be probably the best person to do a video where I'm educating necessarily on leaky gut, um, but do some research on that. You know, you have leaky gut, that's essentially all the bad stuff that you haven't let out of your body, it's leaking into your bloodstream and affecting you and poisoning you. And it, poisoning is not really the best word, but you know what I'm saying. So I think I've given you a good introduction as to why a healthy gut is important. I think most of you probably got that, but in case you hadn't, in case you're like, healthy gut, what's the big deal? Why is everybody talking about a healthy gut? That's why. It's not just a catchword. It's not just for the cool people. Like this is very serious. This is not just about um, a temporary thing for right now. This is about your, your situation right now is for longevity, for your, like your whole life. This is fair. There, there couldn't be anything more important than you focusing on your healthy gut. So. What are the top eight habits slash products? So some of these are, I mean, most of these actually, well, some of these are habits, some of these are specific products, but let's just call them habits. These are the eight top habits that I have incorporated in my life that have made the biggest difference in my healthy gut. And uh, I will start, I'm gonna try to go in order in the order that I incorporated these. I think if I, I think I ate the, <laughs> I think I put these in, in order. So um, number one, digestive enzymes. Um, I remember it was my trainer, Whitney Jones, who first, she was sitting across from me at the table from lunch one day. She handed me some pills before we were getting ready to eat and she goes, um, here, did you bring your own? And I'm like, what are these? And she said, digestive enzymes. She's like, are you not taking enzymes before your meal, every meal? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And it was the first time I had ever heard of it. And she educated me on the fact that taking digestive enzymes before every meal helps your body to break down 
the foods and get more nutrients out of what you're eating. And I was like, okay. Um, so ever since then, I have been taking digestive enzymes with every single meal. Um, I absolutely noticed a difference after, I would say not like after the first time I took digestive enzymes, but after I've been taking them for about a couple of weeks, I just definitely noticed a difference. I think what I recall is I noticed a difference in my elimination. Um, I've always, when I was younger, had a problem, um, not constipation or diarrhea, but just, um, what, how to, it, like, I would not have to go to the bathroom for like a couple days. Is that it? Like, it, so it's like in between constipation and I don't know. I don't, I really don't know what that is, but it was just, I, I just think when I was younger, it was not a regular, I'm so regular now. It's ridiculous. Like every morning I just like clockwork go and at the most, at, at the most regular time. It's like, I'm up about 20 minutes, go to the bathroom up about 20 minutes, go to the bathroom. It's just clockwork. Whereas before it was never clockwork and it was never predictable. And I just, it was traumatic for me ever since I was little. Um, digestive enzymes, right to piggyback off of that, probiotics. And I think it was Whitney also that told me to take probiotics. I didn't understand what they were, um, but as somebody who has taken antibiotics so for such a big part of my adult life, probiotics are key. Probiotics basically balance out what antibiotics take out of the body. But probiotics are just so good for the gut. They are pouring in healthy bacteria into your gut. It is needed for all of us. All of us should be taking probiotics and digestive enzymes. I will link down to all of my favorite products um, that I prefer, that I take. Of course, feel free to Google and find your own brands if you like. These are just my recommendations. Um, this third one is kind of like a duh but I had to put it in here because when I suck at this, I notice a huge difference. When I'm great at it and I'm on point, it's awesome. Water, hydration, it's such a basic, and water hydration is, is key for everything. It's key for weight loss, it's key for gut health, it's key for your skin, it's key for everything. Um, but it is super, super key for, for gut health. Um, we all need to be drinking more water. It doesn't have to be nine gallons of water a day. It just means, you know, regularly be, you know, getting yourself a glass of ice water. This is actually my ketones, um, not just ice water. But drink your water. You will notice if, if you're somebody like me, who has tended to be somebody who drinks more diet soda, don't judge me, than water, focus on your water. Um, the next thing, this is more of a habit or a lifestyle change, without question, going keto a year ago made a massive difference in my gut health, in, in, in the way that my gut feels. Um, in fact, that was the first thing that I noticed was how much I had started to experience, not like when I was younger, but I had started to experience a lot of bloating again. Um, I just remember feeling like every time I went to bed, <sighs> thinking to myself as I crawled into bed with my husband, like, I wish somebody could just take a pin and stick it in my stomach because I felt like a uh, tire that had too much air in it. And that's, that's how I felt every single night. That's no way to go to bed with your husband. I mean, I just was like, what is, what is wrong with me? Like what, it, I, and I didn't know, I didn't know what I was eating that was making me so bloated, but I was just always bloated, always cramping. Um, and when I went keto, the first thing I noticed is that my stomach felt flatter. It felt, uh, I just felt less inflamed. I felt uh, my elimination improved. Um, it just everything. I mean, it was amazing how much my gut health improved with going keto. Pure, no, no question. Um, in fact, to be honest, I mean, not to be TMI, but I'm going to be TMI. I had been having um, issues before and my doctor actually, I had to get a, a stool test because I had, and they, and they found out I had a parasite. Um, and I guess this parasite can be a result of gut health, like, like le something like leaky gut or something. 
which just goes to show you. But like I had gotten to the point before I went keto where every single time I went to the bathroom it, and see, here's the thing, guys, uh, you have to get comfortable talking about your, your, your um, elimination. It's not to be funny. It's not to be gross. But you, you, when I was younger, I would just, if somebody wanted to talk about anything and, and would say, you know, hey, did you have a bowel movement? My friend Kelly used to say that when I would go to her house. She would just, and I'd be like, oh my God, don't talk about it. I just thought it was so gross. But when you realize how important this is and that it is just a bodily function and it's also a reflection of, of your health and what's going on inside your body, then you just can become detached. So when I'm sharing this information with you, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be provocative. I'm not trying to be clickbait. I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. Um, so before I went keto, it was literally to the point where like every time I went to the bathroom, it was diarrhea. Like every single time. That's not normal. And I remember telling my functional medicine doctor, I'm like, what is the, what is wrong with me? It's not like I'm going out and eating pizza and chips every day. Like the food that I was eating made no sense for me to have an upset stomach and have that situation every single morning. And after going keto, that situation corrected itself and I'm completely normal. Um, sugar alcohols. Uh, in my previous life, I was consuming a lot of products with a lot of sugar alcohols. Um, I, I firmly believe that this was something that was making me bloated uh, and, and stomach cramping a lot. Um, in fact, uh, there is one product that I have now in my house. It is a sugar-free syrup. I use it um, sparingly, meaning <laughs> I found this recipe that is for these keto pancakes and they're delicious but I was using this sugar-free syrup and I was making these um, keto pancakes like five days in a row for lunch. I have a problem. And I was having this syrup five days in a row and I just got, I, I got a horrible stomach ache. You, you just can't have something with sugar. It had erythritol in it, I believe. I believe it was erythritol or malitol. Those sugar alcohols, anything that ends in at all like that um, can really be damaging to the stomach. Um, in fact, I read in the most recent book by Dr. Mercola, which I'll link down below, Keto Fast, he talked about the different sugar alcohols. And I believe they ferment in your stomach, and that's exactly what's, what's causing that discomfort. Um, eating real food. When I went keto, um, I became somebody who really, really, I would say 90 to 95% of the food that I eat is real food. And what I mean by that is I'm not having packaged keto food for the most part. I mean, occasionally I'll order um, this BHU. Um, it's really good. BHU keto cookie dough. But I really don't buy packaged keto foods. I eat like real food, meaning just like if we're going to have dinner, we'll have chicken wings that we made um, or food from a restaurant. Um, you're just not going to see me. I don't, I'm, my life used to be protein bars, Lenny and Larry's protein cookies, um, protein powders, making things out of protein powders. Um, just a lot of fake foods. Now, I'm not going to I'm not going to present myself as a supremely, you know, I'm way up here purist. Like I still drink diet soda, okay? Like every single day I have at least one soda, diet soda. So, I'm not going to say like I don't have any chemicals in my body, but what I'm telling you is I just hardly ever have fake foods. Hardly ever. I really would say, like, like I mentioned to you, 95% of the time I'm eating whole real foods from a restaurant or cooking them here. Huge difference, huge difference. Um, tracking, or excuse me, adding in fiber and inulin daily. Um, again, I'm gonna link these products up below. Um, I add, I have been doing this now for two, almost three years. Every morning when I make my husband and I coffee, I add a scoop of um, inulin and a scoop of coffee. Now, inulin is prebiotic. So remember I talked about probiotics? Inulin is prebiotic. 
I learned about that from my friend Tom King, who I interviewed on the podcast. I, I will link up to that interview below. Um, he's the founder of Icon Foods, which has a lot of uh, keto sweeteners. He's also the founder of a company called Gaigon Keto, which has some fantastic keto products and a fantastic keto sweetener as well. I'll link that up below. But he's the one that got me hooked onto inulin and then fiber. None of us are getting enough fiber, and particularly if you go keto, which I, of course, strongly recommend for most of you ladies out there, 40 plus. If you have questions as to why, comment below, DM me, happy to chat with you about that. Um, but adding that into your coffee, it's flavorless, it's tasteless, it blends right in. You're getting that good gut health stuff. You're getting your fiber. It's easy peasy. And then lastly, I used to, you heard me reference this before, ketones. Um, ketones I obviously take primarily because, well, first of all, they taste good. Number two, they put me in ketosis. Number three, they curb my appetite. They curb my cravings. They give me amazing clean energy and help my focus, but they also have tremendous um, benefits for gut health and digestion. Um, so this is something too that really helps. And I mean, even when I'm fasting, you know, when I get like a queasiness in my stomach, the second I take a sip of ketones, it just settles. So I just feel like this is like gut medicine. And that's just my words for it, but. And of course, I will put the link down below. You can order ketones from me in my keto shop. I am a distributor for Prove It. There's all kinds of fantastic flavors. You can order a sample pack for me where I'll put a bunch of samples together with some coffee. In fact, I've got a whole bunch out here on the counter that I'm shipping out uh, tonight to some uh, new customers. Um, I can put together some ketones for you with some protein, with some coffee, or just do a package with a three or a five day um, ketones experience so that you can try it. Um, just let me know, comment down below, and I will get that out to you. But again, just to wrap up, digestive enzymes, probiotics, going keto, water, sugar alcohols, eliminating those, eating real food, tracking fiber, or excuse me, taking fiber, can't read my own writing, inulin and ketones. Those are the eight new practices or products. Wow, did you see it get suddenly dark in here? It's like a storm is coming in. Get in the basement! I, live in the, I used to live in the Midwest. Now I'm in Texas where they don't have basements. It's just like, I'm, I, you guys maybe aren't seeing it, but like all of a sudden, did the power go out? What is going on here? I mean, it just got like really dark. That was crazy. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, this really, really, really made a significant, significant change for me. Now, again, I started doing the digestive enzymes and the probiotics several years ago. Going keto was just a year ago. So some of these things happened in phases. But if you have questions on any of this stuff, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. If this video was helpful for you, of course, I'd love it if you'd like the video. And of course, you know I'm going to invite you to subscribe again. Make sure you hit the little bell button um, so that you're notified every time we put a new video out. But again, thank you guys for tuning in. I do hope this is helpful. Your gut health is so important. And if you're new to this, um, understand, do a little bit of Googling, do a little bit of reading. Don't just take my word for it. Um, I'm just here to help you make some informed decisions, but this really can make a huge, huge difference, not only in your health, but also in your weight loss efforts. So make it a priority. And just remember, what I always say, you're only one change away from a significantly better tomorrow. So think about that. Feel free to ask me any questions. Remember, check the comments or the little paragraph area below. I've got links to all of my favorite products that I just mentioned here down below. And I will see you guys next time on The Kelly O Show. Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope this video on healthy gut additions was helpful for you. I'm going to link up here to my keto playlist because it's kind of complimentary. So check it out, see if you have any questions, and thanks again for tuning in today.